In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a homemade vacuum leak detector, just like this one here. So you can detect vacuum leaks on your car or truck. So if your car's running lean, it usually means there's too much air in the air to fuel mixture. So you might have a rough idle, the car might not even start, it might hesitate, splutter, backfire, anything like that. So what happens is, uh, the air comes in through the air filter and it's controlled, it's metered using something like a map sensor for example. And that tells the ECU in the computer how much air is coming in. However, if one of your hoses is split or the clamp isn't sealing correctly or there's a leak somewhere, it allows what's called unmetered air and the computer can't sense unmetered air because the only way it monitors air is through the sensors and that's how you get a lean condition which is too much air in the air to fuel ratio and it causes these symptoms so with this uh, DIY solution here we're going to find out where and if we have a vacuum leak in our car so here are some of the things I'm going to use uh, mainly things lying around the house in order to create my leak detector so essentially what we're doing here is making a small smoke machine now your supplies may vary it's really just what I had lying around the house as you can see but there are a few reasons behind some of the things I chose so one the uh, main chamber here where we actually generate the smoke I use an old paint can that way if pr too much pressure gets in here then the lid will just pop off you know it's not going to explode like if we had a glass jar for example and we attach an air compressor to here it builds up too much pressure you know the lid's not going to wind off and pop off it's probably just going to explode on you which can be quite dangerous so that's why I've chosen a paint can where we sort of generate the smoke uh, for our project here now inside here when we uh, sort of generate the smoke I've chosen to use a solder iron here again uh, something on 12 volt means you can plug it into your car battery and use it as a totally portable setup I just had this old solder iron laying around it's been in my drawer for years I figured I'll just use it so um, it's, it's connected to a standard AC outlet here but my compressor that I'm go also going to use with this is also on an AC outlet so it's just going to be something I use at home your purpose may vary you may want a purely you know 12 volt DC thing where you have a heater element you can connect it to your car battery that's really up to you there's no right or wrong answers here it just depends what materials you have for my inlet here, so this is what we're going to attach our compressor to, or even a foot pump for example. I'm just using a standard valve stem off a car tire, so it looks something like this. And this is what you find in pretty much any uh, wheel on the road, you know, for a car you can get a bag of ten of these really cheap. And that's just going to have the lid of the paint can sit on this rim here. And we can just attach any pretty much standard, uh, you know, foot pump on there. It's a standard Schroeder valve. I will use a valve stem removal tool to remove out this uh, centerpiece here, as we, we don't really need this in these circumstances. So I've removed the valve stem here. And as you can see, it's right there. We don't really need this because we don't want to hold pressure. It's not actually going to work like a tire, for example. So we just want to get air in here, but we want a standard fitting. So that's why I'm using this for the inlet port on here. And for the outlet port, so we're putting uh, air into here, forcing our smoke out, out to the outlet port. I'm just using something off uh, a camel back. This is what runners kind of use. It's just something I had laying around the house. And this little metal piece here is off a hookah set. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drill a hole here, put that hookah piece in here. And the um, pipe here, you can use any uh, tubing really, like surgical tubing. As long as it makes a nice tight fit there, it's good to go. So I'm just going to drill a hole here glue this in and that's going to be our outlet line here again it depends what you have around the house you can use a, a hookah pipe it really depends so these are some of the things I'm going with we've got our baby oil here that's for generating the smoke inside the heater element I've chosen the solder line there's our chamber the paint can we're going to need a drill and some drill bits to actually prepare the holes here and also some glue I recommend epoxy and that's for securing things like the valve stem here into the lid of the paint can now this glue here, it's up, um, supported up to 1900 PSI, if you imagine the PSI on a car tires around early 40s, you know, a standard compressor, you know, $50 compressor goes up to about 200 PSI too, so this will be more than enough to ensure we have no leaks or anything like that in the lid of the paint can when we drill these holes. 
so the first thing I'm going to do is measure with my measuring calipers here the width of three different things. So that's the soldering iron here, and that's this width here, the width of the valve stem here, which is this piece, piece right here, and also the width of the outlet port, which is this bit right here. And there'll be the three holes we'll be drilling into the paint lid. So I'm just going to use some measuring calipers in order to do that. Select the correct drill bit, and then we're going to glue them in. So our soldering iron here, 12.36 millimeters. So we're going to select uh, the appropriate drill bit for that. So this is the closest drill bit I got. This, I think this will work for our purposes for installing the soldering iron. I've just put some rough circles on the top where all three items will go. I've just um, started them off so the drill bits don't wonder. We're going to start with a small drill bit as you do and work our way up to the actual size. So I have the holes measured and drilled now, so the next thing I'm going to do here is just unscrew these, this little bracket off the soldering iron here, so three little Phillips head. Obviously your uh, situation may be different, but I'm just going to sandwich the lid of the paint can between this washer and the handle of the iron here, and these screws will actually hold it to the uh, top of the lid, so that's the plan there. So I've put the soldering iron through the lid here. I've put the bottom so it's sandwiched between the uh, paint lid here. And I'm just going to use a marker pen right there to uh, mark the holes in all three of these uh, small holes in here. So there we are. So we're just going to drill those through now. So I've drilled them out. Now I'm going to screw the soldering iron to the lid. So the hardest part, I suppose, in this situation, soldering iron's in, very solid. Now we're just going to push in the valve stem. So we're looking pretty good now. We're just going to epoxy our valve stem in here for our outlet hose. So when we're gluing our valve stem in, we're also going to make sure there's no leaks anywhere in our holes around here. So we're going to put uh, some epoxy around here as well. Maybe also around the uh, valve stem if it doesn't have a good seal. And of course, uh, we're going to glue our valve stem in as well. We don't want any leaks here because when we're pushing air into the chamber, we don't want smoke to leak out anywhere here. So that's why we're doing that. So if you've never used epoxy before, um, one is the uh, kind of resin and one's the hardener. That's why they're in separate chambers. So when they mix together, they'll form something really solid. And there's instructions on the back in order to you know, use it. It sets in around five minutes. You can handle it in around an hour and it'll fully cure in 12 hours so this will be probably something you glue together you know the night before and then you come at it tomorrow and finish it off so I'm just mixing it together on cardboard here we're not going to need too much just make sure it's fully mixed so I've inserted the metal tube here I just want to put epoxy around all these gaps here and just make sure it uh, you know gives it a nice solid fit into the paint lid here so I'm just going to use a q-tip to apply that all around the edge here, all the way around until it's nice and solid. So I've applied the epoxy on both sides here, as you can see, there's no air gaps whatsoever. It looks somewhat straight, so that's good for our purposes. We're just going to let this set now. But also we're going to do exactly the same where the uh, soldering iron goes through the lid and also just around the outside of the valve stem as well. We don't want any air leaks. So I've applied epoxy all around the seals there for every single one. With the solder nine, I didn't go all the way up to the heater element, but on the top I compensated for that around there as well. So there's going to be no leaks whatsoever. So I'm going to let this cure for around 12 hours, then we're going to put it together. So now the epoxy is cured, it's all hard here. One thing you can do is just really seat the lid on there and blow down one of these holes while putting the finger on the other one just to make sure there's not many other leaks. Again, uh, we just want to seal as many as possible so when we put the smoke uh, out of here we don't want it seeping out of uh, any of the gaps anywhere else. So now we're going to take it outside and see how much smoke it generates. Okay, so we're outside now. I'm going to put the baby oil in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to drop a rag in there. It could be a sock, a hanky, it really doesn't matter. We just want it to soak up some of this baby oil. And with the baby oil, we're going to put around half an inch in there, give or take. So just fill it up to the uh, about half inch mark, something like that, not too much. So the uh, baby oil's in there now. We're just going to put the lid back on. Press it down sort of firm just so the um, you know the smoke we generate doesn't escape. That's pretty good. And then we're going to attach a uh, pump of some sort to it and test it out. 
So our first test is going to be the foot pump here. I've attached it to the top of the can. We have our baby oil in here. We're all ready to go. It's been plugged in for about three minutes now. It's quite warm, which is why we don't use hot glue or anything like that because the glue will melt. So with the epoxy, we're good to go on that front. Now we're going to give the foot pump a go and check for smoke. And with the foot pump, you can see we've got a nice stream of smoke. It's not leaking out anywhere else. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. So our next test, we're going to use an air compressor. This is a 100 psi uh, air compressor here, standard end there. We're just going to pop that onto the inlet here for our can and see if we can get uh, much smoke come out. So there we go. That looks nice, doesn't it? So you can see that there was a lot of smoke and it just kept coming. So uh, yeah, something like this little DIY solution, it's really good. So let's put it to the test on a car. Okay, so here's a top typical scenario where you might want to use a vacuum leak tester. What I've done, I've disconnected the uh, A vacuum line. Doesn't really matter which one, but I have uh, this one off the brake booster here. So that'll have our outlet hose right in there. And then I've simulated a vacuum leak, which is just, uh, you know, it could be a gash in here, but I've just unplugged that for now. So we're going to feed our smoke in through the brake booster vacuum line, and we hope to see an outlet right here. So I've got quite a nice fit in there. If not, you can duct tape it, clamp it, whatever you need to do. That's pretty tight in there, so I'm happy with that. Now we're just going to put the air compressor here on our newly crowned Smokemaster 5000 and see if we can get a, you know, our results to produce. Okay, here we go. There you go. Right there, look. So it's as easy as that. So as you can see there, it worked pretty great. Our simulated vacuum leak, we had smoke coming out there within three to four seconds, so pretty good for that. And you can do other stuff with this. You can check leaks in almost anything. It doesn't have to even be on a car, but in terms of cars, you can actually check for exhaust leaks as well. So you put the outlet hose in the exhaust, put a rag around it so it doesn't leak out, and you can check for leaks in the exhaust. So it's a really useful uh, tool. So a couple of things, um, number one, um, it gets pretty hot, the can itself, especially if it's a metal paint can, so position it where you want it before you use it, then you don't have to you know, get a cloth and move it around, that's number one. Number two, if you're using an air compressor, it forces a lot of air into here, and what can happen is the baby oil can actually force itself out somehow. So you don't want to put too much baby oil in here, you know, just a little bit, you don't want to fill it all the way up or anything crazy like that. So there are a couple of things I'll leave you with, uh, you know when using one of these so that's it really let me know what you call yours mine's the smoke master 5000 you know nice and original there yeah let me know in the comments below i hope you find your leaks and i hope you found this video useful thanks for watching